I can't remember exactly when it was I bought this stuff, but as best I remember, it was back in the 80s, and I think it was when I was doing the Lusitania. And um, what this is for is to aid you in putting on decals. Now, I can't remember if I used it to put it over top of a bare plastic part or a painted plastic part. Now, this piece here, we did, we painted this way back uh, just over 10 months ago, on March the 9th actually. I checked it out. Now this paint here is the same paint as what we sprayed on, on here yesterday. And uh, this is not going to be a very good test, but I'm going to take a drop of this stuff and I'm going to put it on here and just see how it reacts. Because if I had have used this stuff on a painted surface before, it would have been with the Humbroil enamel paints, not an acrylic paint. So this may not work, but I do remember it really helped to be able to slide the decal around and then you uh, use a little paintbrush to wick the uh, uh, the excess out of the decal and uh, yeah it, it, it worked really really well so I'm kind of wondering if it would work on this but anyway let's just put a little drop of this on here I don't even know if you can still get this stuff anymore uh, you know it's, it's got to be about 40 years old so uh, yeah, you know what, just for the fun of it, we'll, we'll check the internet, see if they still make it. But in the meantime, let's get a little drop going on here and see what it does to the acrylic paint. Okay, this is actually the first time I've taken this lid off that I can remember, that is, since the 80s. Now, we don't need very much here, just, just a drop. Now we'll see how that affects the acrylic. I'll put the macro lens on. I'm estimating about five minutes has passed. Well, it does not appear to be uh, dissolving. Um, maybe this will do it faster. Okay, let's let that dry now and see, you know, how it affects it. Tell you what, I'll get the hair dryer, hair dryer and I will force dry it. Now, did it soften the plastic? I meant, uh, did it soften the paint? Well, this just might work. Let's get a decal that I'm not planning on using and, and actually try it. Now the bottom left corner here of this square is where we're going to try and put this. Now, now what this is, it's supposed to actually go on the tail of the aircraft and then you would cut away segments of it and it would form a swastika. But I'm not planning to use that, so uh, right now I'm dipping it in the jar of this uh, Salva set. Okay. Now I think this should just slide off. I'll do it again. Put some more on there. Maybe I didn't wait long enough for the uh, 
solvent or the uh, solution to work its way into the backing and it's still adhering to the to the paper you know this is the first time I've done this in about 40 years oh come on It could be that I was I should have soaked the uh, the decal in water first. When I was originally editing out these scenes here, I thought, you know, I should edit out some of these dead spots. There's just too much of this constant brushing the decal, trying to get it off of the paper. But then I thought, if I do that, then you're going to lose the uh, perspective here of just how hard I really did try to get this off. So I've left it in. And, well, you know how to do the fast-forward thing if you don't like to, you know, if you want to get through this in a hurry. Okay, I've re-dipped. I think it's coming now. I'm trying to get the bristles to dig in and sort of push it off, but maybe that's not a very good way to do it. Okay, I do have more of these. I think there's about eight or ten of them. Oh, it's, it's loosening up. I could try it again with, with water first. I'm probably going to wreck the decal. Sure glad I'm not uh, trying to put it on the plane. Probably gonna wreck it. I'm gonna have to go on YouTube and f find out how to put on decals because I th it apparently I have forgotten. Maybe I should have let the uh, paper soak for a lot longer than I have here. I don't remember it taking this long, but on the other hand, maybe it maybe it did. I have to look up how to put on decals for dummies. Okay, well I've pretty much wrecked that one. Okay, I'm going to redo this and I'm going to soak it in water first because there, I do have more of these. Okay, it's, it's just not coming off there. I'm, I'm just wrecking it. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to uh, use another one and uh, I'll let it soak in water a little longer. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go on uh, YouTube for, uh, on the internet for two things. First of all, see if we can find this Solva set, see if they still make it. And also, you know, how do other people put on decals? I, I, I admit it, I, I, uh, I've forgotten. Okay, I went online here and I found out that Solva set is still available. And it's still under the name Solva set. The bottle looks a little bit different, and some of the badging on the bottle is a little bit different, but it's probably the same stuff. Now here in Winnipeg, if I go online to the hobby store, I find out that they're selling this stuff. It's a different name, but I'll bet you it's the same kind of stuff. Yeah, just a point of interest. It's not that important, I guess. 
I just checked out YouTube here and I watched three little short instructional videos on how to apply a decal. I was feeling pretty stupid that I couldn't actually remember. I was pretty sure I'd soaked it in water first, but I guess I forgot about that. And sure enough, you're supposed to soak the decal in water first. Uh, a couple of the videos said soak it for 10 to 12 seconds. The other video said 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, probably if I watched a fourth video, I'd have got a different timing. Anyway, let's try it with some lukewarm water and uh, see if we can't have better results here. Uh, surely I haven't completely lost my touch here. We're going to try things just a little bit differently here. Got a little bit of uh, lukewarm water there. And I'm going to use water to uh, work its way into the back of the paper instead of the solvacet. And uh, I noticed on a couple of the YouTube videos that I watched, they used a, a Q-tip to help slide the uh, decal off of the paper. Um, and it, it could be that this just wasn't catching it enough for some reason. Oh, the reason for the uh, dime here is just to, so that you can see the relation in size. I want you to understand that we are working with something very, very small. I don't think decals actually come much smaller than that. Well, they probably do, but I haven't seen any. Anyway, um, I know that sometimes in my videos, uh, because I'm using the macro lens so much, you get the idea that things are much larger than they really are. Okay, now back to the Q-tip here. I'm thinking that because this is so small, if I use one of these little mini Q-tips that uh, Jim sent us a few months ago, it's going to have the same abrasive quality to catch on the top of the surface of the uh, uh, decal as this will. And, and these are just so big that I'm afraid that the that little decal could end up getting caught up in the on the Q-tip, so uh, we won't be using this. We'll be using this. And uh, I don't think there's anything else I want to tell you, uh, other than we're going to try and place it right here. Because you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing, except in this very small area here, I'm going to explain what I'm doing. And right now, I'm just taking a little bit of uh, solvacet set on the brush and I'm going to work it into place there. This reminds me a lot of a wetting agent that I used to use a long time ago when I did uh, photography. And I would use it on my dryer if I wanted to have a glossy surface on the uh, prints and put them, uh, I would put the print face down on the dryer instead of face up. To have a, and it would end up then with a mat anyway. I'm, don't need to know all that. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do now, if I can get it positioned right on the tweezer, I am putting the decal into the lukewarm water. Okay. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Well, you know what? Maybe I will uh, cut out the... Uh, video here and or maybe just run it fast forward okay I'm just guessing that was about 30 seconds when I actually do the editing I'll be able to find out how long it was to the fraction of a second but right now okay that's still wet is this gonna slide now oh, very gently yes well this is working much better Okay, I'll just re-wet, and I want to put it right on the corner there. I'm starting to get a cramp in my hand. <laughs> See if I can get that to be sort of square on there. Maybe I take a little bit more solva set so it can kind of float around. See if I can adjust it. 
Can it be turned? See, once the solver set begins to uh, evaporate away, I wonder what that uh, white thing is that I've got in there. What is that? Oh, you know what? I wonder if that's the paint came off. And I'm looking at the metal. Okay, there, it's kind of square. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take and get the moisture out of this brush and I'm going to try and wick away off the edges. Where's my little paper here? Okay, now it's just very, very gently without, whoops. Try and get rid of some of all this excess liquid here. It should just wick right into the bristles. At least that's the plan. No, that doesn't look straight there. There we go. Try and get it down on the edges. Move my solva set before I accidentally knock it over. Once again, you're seeing this a way better than I am. Don't tell anybody, but I didn't put on my extra strong glasses. Why don't I put them on now? Oh yeah, now I can see what I'm looking at there. That's uh, That white spot is uh, where the paint got removed. I bet you people were shouting that out a long time ago already. Okay, let's uh, let that dry. Let's see if I can get rid of this here. I'm just trying to get the uh, the uh, solver set that's pooling in the crack. I think I got most of it. Okay, I would say in about uh, 15 minutes that's going to be dry. So we'll take a look at it in 15 minutes, see what it looks like. As Richard Nixon often said, at least I'm told he often said it, I can't actually remember hearing him say it, but I am told that he used to say this a lot. Let me make this perfectly clear. Or I want to make this perfectly clear. Well, I want to make this perfectly clear. If you've been one of the viewers who have been with me for a long time, and maybe you've used the word friend in your comments, I am not talking to you. Yeah. I just want to make that perfectly clear. Okay, well, we're waiting for this to dry. Uh, you know how I usually talk about what I'm thinking about, and this morning I was thinking about this. And uh, I think probably the best thing for me to do is to tell you a couple of true stories that will get you to, so that you'll sort of understand where I'm coming from. And I'm going to go back to the late 70s. Uh, there was somebody that I had known uh, for maybe 10 years before that who approached me as a friend and said something to the effect of, I have, uh, how, how did he, put he, he, he buttered me up with, uh, you're the type of person that could, uh, would be interested in, you know, doing well in life and you probably want to, in other words, do, you don't want to be a, a bus depot express clerk all your life is what he was trying to say without actually saying that. And of course, uh, I bit. And uh, he had a business proposition that he wanted to uh, tell me about. So, uh, well, he wouldn't tell me what it was. <laughs> I'll bet you some of you right now are thinking, I know what it was. Okay, so he wouldn't tell me what it was. So he and his wife come over to the house and uh, we've invited some other friends over for because that's that's the way it was done. You and you invite a group of people over, and he'll come over, and he'll try and talk you into this business proposition. It, it, they didn't tell you what it was until almost at the very end, and uh, well, it was Amway. Yeah. Well, we got sucked in, and and he came as a friend, so I trusted him. Uh, 
Yeah, we were in it for about a year. The first couple of months, I was really gung-ho about it. I was listening to the tapes, and I was getting all psyched up, and then I realized that this is sort of like an upside-down pyramid scheme. Uh, nobody was really buying the stuff. It was overpriced, and the only people that were making any money off it were those that were, you know, what you would call at the top of the pyramid or the bottom of the pyramid, depending on which way you want to look at it. And all the rest of us were just sort of supporting these guys. Well, I we got out of it. But one thing that was really interesting uh, that I should pass on, I'm, we mentioned to him, oh, very soon after we got into it, we're losing friends. And he says, he says, uh, he says that's okay. You'll have Amway friends. That's almost word for word what he said. That's okay. You'll have Amway friends. Well, yeah. Anyway, story number two. About uh, three years ago, when I was doing a lot of pen turning, and I don't know which pen series it was that I was in, but somebody started making a lot of comments. And they were getting extra friendly and uh, coming to me as their friend and all the rest of it. And, and I was getting suspicious because it was just too much with the superlatives and too much with your friend. And, and you know the old saying, once bit, twice shy? Well, sure enough, after about, oh, I'm guessing 10 comments down the road, he makes the comment to, I wish I could afford a pen kit. And then and I'm thinking, my goodness, they're not that expensive. And about two or three comments later, he says, could you send me money so that I can afford to buy a pen kit? Well... Uh, I instantly blocked him. But I felt bad about it because I thought afterwards, what what if he really was a poor person? I mean, not all of us have the, the privilege, or maybe it's not a privilege, of living in an affluent society. And uh, maybe he couldn't afford a pen kit. So I felt bad. Okay. Now, if you are one of the viewers who have been commenting for, for several years, or even several months, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to somebody who may be coming and hitting me as a friend, but they're going to maybe want to try and sell me, set me up in a, some sort of Ponzi scheme, or maybe, maybe uh, he's, he's going to try and sell me religion, or I don't know what that is. If, if you're that type of person, you're wasting your time, my time, and the time of the viewers who like to read comments. So uh, if you think you're going to talk me into something, you're sadly mistaken, my friend. Okay, I've wanted to get that off my chest for about a month now. So we won't talk about it anymore. Now what have I learned here? Well, I've learned that I'm going to have to be super careful with the uh, Q-tip that I don't rub the paint off. Um, uh, because this paint here is like, what, 10, 11 months old. And the uh, wings of the aircraft are only going to be maybe 24 hours or so, depending on how long I leave it. So, like I say, I'm going to have to be just super careful to only touch the top of the decal as I move it around. But, but this Q-tip did grab onto the decal really well. So I'll just have to remember that. Now, I think we've got to paint some airplanes yet, don't we? I am noticing here that this video is actually getting quite long. And uh, I'm thinking that in order to do a real good job of videoing the painting of the tops, or I guess I was going to do the bottom first, wasn't I? That uh, I better save it for tomorrow's video. Um, yeah, I kind of rambled on and on. When, when I start these, these videos, I, I never know how it's going to go. And uh, yeah, this one has been another unusual video. I guess you, you could call it unusual. Uh, so uh, I think we'll just leave the uh, painting until tomorrow and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
use the blue tack here somehow mount the planes upside down so that I can handle them and angle them just the right way and then paint paint the underside of each plane and then we'll wait 24 hours and maybe do something else and I'll rant about something else <laughs> no I promise I won't for a while and uh, yeah in other words <laughs> thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow I hope